Welcome to the Michael Myers Minute, where we delve into the 1978 horror classic Halloween one minute at a time. I'm your host, Robert Black. The girls walk home from school. Michael is driven by. We have learned about the girls' plans for the evening. Annie babysitting her boyfriend, Paul, grounded so he cannot come by. Linda and her boyfriend, Bob, will be coming by. And Lori is babysitting three houses down. As minute 24 begins, we have a strange sort of eye camera going on. We are not Michael here, but like him, we linger and watch. And we linger with a guest, Scott Corelli of Dueling Genre, back again. Welcome back, Scott. Thanks again for having me, Robert. Yeah. Now, my first note, because I love locations, this is the 1000 block of Montrose Avenue in South Pasadena after the cut. The intersection to the left is what they use for the establishing shot in minute 12 for Haddonfield in the present. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Huh. Now, the girls are talking, but the mic, they're not near the microphone, so it's hard to get. Uh, at one point, Annie says, hush, it's terrible. She says to Linda, why don't you buy your own then? I don't know what she's talking about. And something uh, like about 20 off me, girl. I don't know what this means there. And then about second 20. Huh, I got nitpicky here. I think they're talking about alcohol. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. I think they're trying, like, she's saying it's awful, and she's saying, well, buy your own then. That sounds to me like they're talking about alcohol. Maybe. Like, um, who's going to pick up the drinks for later? Yeah, she must be, she must have, uh, like, she must be like, I've got that, I've got that bottle of vodka. And she's like, it tastes awful. Well, buy your own then. <laughs> um, you know, that's what I assume they're talking about. I'm looking at my first note, which is really detailed. It says, Annie pushes up her right sleeve and rubs the inside of her elbow. Linda takes out a breath spray and sprays some in her mouth. Oh. The simultaneity of these two actions makes me wonder if there wasn't a version of the upcoming Bush moment where both Annie and Linda were still there. Like, they both needed to be doing something at the same time so Lori could notice Michael and they wouldn't. Oh. But the script and novel both have Linda leave before they get to the Bush. So, oh. I don't know. I guess it's just coincidence. They both were doing stuff. Mm. And I happen to notice, because I'm slowing down these minutes and looking closely. Mm. So they reach Linda's house first. Linda's house is 1027 Montrose in South Pasadena, if you want to go visit. <laughs> Although I have heard the owners of the houses on this street are not very, not as nice. Oh. And if I'm wrong about that, I must apologize now to the owners of this house. <laughs> Since I just said they're not nice. I haven't been there. I don't know. Well, I mean. I just heard that people get annoyed on that street. Oh, I see. Yeah. I mean, not everybody's going to leave pumpkins out. Because a lot of people go for photos by that bush, you know. Oh, right. Of course. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Like, if you're going to buy a house that was featured prominently in a really famous movie, I, I, you got to have a good humor about it. Yeah. Or don't buy that house. Yeah. I mean, and if you've been living there since 78, you should have gotten used to it by now. But yeah, if you moved in there and know what it is, yeah. It's like something the No excuse. Something the real estate agent has to disclose. Yeah. It's <laughs> like, on the one hand, someone may have been murdered here. On the other hand, this was used in a horror film in 1978, and people will come here to take pictures. <laughs> be warned. And I mean, why do you want to be the party pooper? You know? <laughs> I don't know. Like, they just love a thing. Yeah. Like, they don't, I mean, as long as they're not, as long as they don't damage your house, I mean, you know, there's always going to be assholes, yeah. but like, as long as they're not being an asshole, they're not like damaging your property, like, let them take pictures by your bush. Who cares? <laughs> Although, if I do move forward with this podcast and do Halloween 2, I might be tempted to throw rocks at the Myers house for that minute, so we'll see. <laughs> Maybe don't do that. <laughs> Annie suggests that Linda is saving the treats for Bob because Linda wants to get out of get trick or treating with her little brother. Mm. Linda walks away. Do I don't? Oh, I did. I talked about some of the sexism in the novelization in an earlier minute, and 
here as Linda walks away. Uh, it says, Linda walked up the path to her house, her tightly clad rear jiggling seductively. You don't have to wiggle it, Annie called out to her. There aren't any guys around. You can never tell when one may be hiding in the bushes, Linda replied, shouldering the front door and disappearing inside. That hiding in the bushes line, of course, gives Annie a reason to think uh, Lori is making a joke later when she says someone's by the bush. Yeah, I mean, that's, you know, I don't, I I like the joke. I don't yeah. know if it's worth it. It's also funny in the film because, as we'll see in a moment, oh no, we'll see next minute when they pass the bush, there are two guys watching from the nearby porch. <laughs> so it would have been weird if she said there's no guys around. Yeah, she's not very observant. Because, as we know, can there's... see with Michael Myers <laughs> behind the bush. Yeah. Uh, now, yeah. Uh, another note I had, minute 18 Outside the elementary school, there was an extra station wagon, not just Michael's. Here in minute 24, we get another station wagon on the other side of the street. Maybe they were just popular in 78. I'm not sure. Or I'm getting paranoid about station wagons because I keep looking for Michael's. <laughs> I think they were popular. I mean, they were they must have been popular enough. I mean, that was uh, that was sort of like the go to car in uh, that 70s show. Right. Was station wagons. True. Yeah, they had the station wagon. Yeah. Yeah. And the first, when was the first vacation? That was early 80s, and they were going for a new station wagon to replace the old station wagon. <laughs> I, it's a uh, f- uh, few, few more depressing statements than what you just said. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> get to, gonna take in the old station wagon and get a new station wagon. Exactly. Oh, boy. Um, yeah, so we uh, we get we get the shape over here. Yeah, hanging out behind the bush. There's a mistake right before that, actually, because Annie's looking up. <laughs> that mask is very effective because, like, from a distance, it just it just vaguely looks like someone, you know. Um, it's it's just uh, yeah, it's it's pretty great. I don't. Um, I the only the only complaint I would have with this shot, and it's it's a great shot, but, <laughs> but the the. Um, actor playing uh, Michael is, uh, I don't know, he's sort of, um, he's posing a little too much, I think. Uh, he's got like his fist clenched and I don't know, he looks like a like a cardboard cutout or something uh, until he steps back behind the bush. <laughs> That's what they should put on the location. They should have a cardboard cutout that just sits by the bush all the time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, Absolutely. That's what I would do if I had that house. Should go there on Halloween and see if they decorate it. No. Speaking of that mask and how it looks here, though, a story that my sis, neither my sisters nor me, we we didn't tell in minute one or two. Uh, the street we grew up on, like our block, had one street light, and it was kind of in the bottom of a tree. So if you glanced down the street, you saw this white circle in a tree. That looked kind of like Michael looks in a lot of these shots here, where like there's this just white thing hovering over, like yeah, in places it shouldn't be. Yeah, yeah. I, know, I mean, like, how many times have we, um, like, as kids or as adults, seen something out of the corner of our eye and think it's someone, and then we yeah. actually turn and look at it, and it's like, oh, it's just a collection of random things that just hit my hit the corner of my eye. It's just got the right shape. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just at the right the right shape. Exactly. <laughs> shape. Yeah. Um, and that's sort of what that looks like. Like you could, you know, like Lori, she's sort of, you know, her friends sort of gaslight her like, ah, oh, you're crazy. <laughs> um, she's like, oh, yeah, I guess maybe I am. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, like I, you know, I felt like Lori sometimes. You think you see something. Yeah, you're seeing things and no one else sees them. Yeah. Annie does see it, though. Right, right. Second 35, she is looking up when we cut to Michael, but that's OK. Oh, a uh, fun note for listeners, if you look at this location in Google Earth, it's the 1000 block of Montrose Avenue in South Pasadena, there is a marker for Michael Myers Bush in between 1025 and 1019 Montrose. So they actually marked it on the map, oh. which I thought was cool. That is cool. Yeah, so we get Michael by the hedge, Annie digs in her purse, Michael stepping behind the hedge, and I noticed, I actually just noticed this this morning, you can see Michael's station wagon parked down the street on this up to the, this is to the north. Oh, yeah. The other station wagon was to the south. But Michael's is parked across the street. You can see it at second 41. It comes into view behind a tree. Yeah. So he basically drove around the block, parked and waited for them. Yep. That's not creepy at all, Michael. 
No, no. <laughs> I guess that's what he's going for. So he does. Oh, we were saying last minute, like, how does he know where they're going? He does know where they live then because he's here. He just saw Linda walk into her yard. Wherever he goes behind the hedge, he probably sees where Annie goes. Right. And while we don't see it, he could follow Lori from there. Right. Or in the scene added for TV later, he follows Linda over to Lori's house. Oh, right. Maybe that's how he finds where Lori lives. Yeah. But yeah, this is a great little scene. Yeah, I just, I, I really love this, uh, this, <laughs> the way that they shot this uh, stocking stuff. Because um, we both feel like Michael, but then we also feel like the victim, like we're being watched at the same time. It's really. Yeah, it's like we're watching them, then we're being watched. Hey, I, I don't know. I don't know how they pulled that off, but it's really good. Yeah, this is a good. This is there's not much detail to this minute, but it is an important minute because this is this one of those scenes that everyone remembers from the movie. It's Michael by that bush, yeah, and his ability to disappear quickly in the next minute, right? Once Annie's up there, right? I actually, don't have much else for this minute. Annie says, "Oh, subtly, isn't he?" She heads for the bush, and the minute ends with just like a frame of Lori up close. Thank you for being with us, Scott. One more time. Remind the listeners how they can stalk you. Uh, I'm on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. at Scott Corelli. And you can find me and my podcast at DuelingGenre.com. Uh, I'll just do a quick rundown. So it's Back to the Future Minute, Spider-Man Minute, the Cornetto Minute, uh, which is Shaun of the Dead, Hot Fuzz, and the World's End. And then uh, The Doctor's Companion, which is a Doctor Who podcast. Uh, and we have an original audio drama on the site as well called Geek by Night, which is about a bunch of... Uh, friends who work at a comic book shop together and get superpowers it's a sort of <laughs> it's a it's a sort of a comedy adventure thing um sort of in the style of like a buffy the vampire slayer is the kind of tone that nice. we go for so uh check that out that's called geek by night uh you can find that and all the other podcasts we do um on every uh at every uh podcast app and uh, at duelinggenre.com and you can stalk us on Twitter and Facebook at Myers Minute or join our Facebook group, 45 Lampkin Lane. Leave a review if you like us. Subscribe. Thank you for listening. Till next time. See you.